In this video, we're going to explain glycolysis. So I've done a simplified diagram of the process. Now, glycolysis is obviously the first stage of respiration. It's actually the first stage of both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So this stage can take place even without oxygen. And glycolysis, let's just write it over here, it occurs in the cytoplasm, not the mitochondria. And as I say, it's the first stage of both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So glycolysis starts with glucose. So we've got glucose as the substrate. Glucose obviously has six carbons, which are represented by these circles here. Now, the first thing you're going to say in a written description of glycolysis is that glucose is phosphorylated. So we're going to add phosphate groups to glucose, and this is done using ATP. OK, so we need two ATP at the start of glycolysis. If we hydrolyze those two ATP, it's going to give us two adenosine diphosphate and two inorganic phosphate. And it's these two inorganic phosphates that we're going to use to phosphorylate the glucose. So we're literally going to take those two inorganic phosphates which I've shown as these black circles here, and we're gonna add them on to our glucose. So this, we can just call it phosphorylated glucose. We phosphorylated the glucose. So that's nice and easy to remember. Or you can call it hexose bisphosphate as its actual name, hexose bisphosphate, but it's fine for AQA to just call it phosphorylated glucose. So that's the first stage. And the first thing you can get marks for, we use two ATP, we hydrolyze them, and we use the two inorganic phosphates to phosphorylate the glucose, producing phosphorylated glucose. Now we phosphorylated it, so it's really unstable. So the phosphorylated glucose is going to break down immediately into two molecules of triose phosphate. And we do need to be able to name this molecule. So we've got two triose phosphates. You can see we've literally just split this because it was so unstable. So each triose phosphate, you've got three carbons and you've also got a phosphate group. Okay. Now, what's going to happen to the triose phosphate? We need to say a couple of things. So the triose phosphates, which are here, are oxidized. And remember, oxidation is loss. So when we say they're oxidized, they're actually losing hydrogen. And that hydrogen is going to be accepted by a coenzyme called NAD. So that NAD, when it accepts the hydrogen, it's going to form NADH. Or you can call it reduced NAD because it's gained hydrogen. And that step is really important for marking points. So we say the triose phosphate is oxidized or it loses hydrogen. It's dehydrogenated. And the NAD is reduced or it gains hydrogen. So we're forming two molecules of NADH. We're also going to make two molecules of pyruvate, one, two. Each pyruvate contains three carbon. So in terms of end products, we've made two molecules of pyruvate and we've made two reduced NADs or NADHs. What's missing is that in this step here between triose phosphate and making pyruvate, we also make four ATP. So two ATP will be made here and two ATP will be made here, which gives us a total ATP production of four ATP. And this ATP is made via substrate level phosphorylation, which simply means a donor molecule donated that phosphate to ADP to make ATP. We make four ATP, but don't forget, we did need two ATP at the start to phosphorylate that glucose, to make the phosphorylated glucose, which is unreactive. So what we can say, because we made four, but we used two, we can say that overall, we've got a net gain of two ATP. And really what you need to focus on for glycolysis is the end products.
So in terms of end products, we've got a net gain of two ATP, which were made via substrate level phosphorylation. We've got two NADH and we've got two pyruvates. Now I've simplified this quite a lot. To be honest, you could even simplify it further. Key marking points are going to be for phosphorylating glucose using ATP, the oxidation of triosphosphate, the production of reduced NADH and pyruvate, and the net gain of 2 ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. All of this is happening in the cytoplasm in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. If we continue into aerobic respiration, we're obviously going to move into the link reaction, the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. And you're going to learn about how we make much more ATP because glycolysis is only giving us a net gain of two. So if we do only have anaerobic respiration, that's all of the ATP we're going to get per molecule of glucose. But when we move into aerobic, you'll see how the other stages allow us to produce much, much more.